Right, welcome back to the channel. It's, uh, what day is it, Thursday? Uncle John's up a ladder doing something with cracks and stuff. Tati's been really productive. Mm. He's making a, um, some wall art. We got into a conversation about like wall art and 3D stuff and using parts to, you know, put on the wall. And then we sort of seen a robot when we picked this up and a couple of other bits and pieces and while I've been away, I've been for a meeting with Twin Engine Corsa at the airfield to see about doing uh, some private drag racing events. So that went very positively. I've just got back from there, so that's what Tati's been up to while I've been away. Anyway, he's been really productive. Oh, he's made some seats. Now we've got a, a seating area. I think Jonathan wants them for his car, you know. We're going to end up with his vinyl, uh, his uh, cloth seats replacing them, isn't it, aren't we? Now nah, we can't have cloth because those are easier to wipe down. It's going to get dusty in here. What we've been up to with the car this morning before I went to this meeting and not filming anything. These are the hydraulic rams that I've got for lifting them. And obviously the, the pumped, that's the pump for them there. There's another one there, see? So that's them extended as far as they go at the minute. So we've been trying to work out where to put them. We've got a couple of different options. It doesn't move that far, but we want the clam to lift up as much as possible. Obviously it's really heavy, so we need to work out where best to put it. One of the options is making a bracket off this hinge, so it's all, all one, and that mounts then the ram to about there, which would push on there. Another one that I was thinking of was having the ram there and it pushing that way, but that means that like the, 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 the mountain, you've got the ram sat there and you've got the mountain in there and it, it affects that. And, but then this morning I, I realized that it doesn't, these rams don't just push, they pull as well. So if we put the ram there, pulling from there, you'd essentially have it sat about there. So the, that would mean the mounting for it would be there and it could pull it back that way. That's an option and the top's an option and like doing it an angle, which was where I originally thought it was gonna sit, pushing from down there up that way from the bottom of it. Don't think that's gonna, I think that's a better option. And if we can get it to work, I think that's a better option because it should push it up further but it needs to be able to push the weight and making it part of that bracket means it won't rip itself off the roof. It could only ever rip itself off the bracket, if you know what I mean. It wouldn't necessarily damage the roof, but it could damage the, the bracket. Maybe I don't know, but it's in there pretty well. So the bracket that runs right the way across, it's obviously it's bonded in and fiberglassed over. So it's pretty damn strong. So I don't know, but we're playing with that anyway. And inner arches. So getting it on the road, can't not be having inner arches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the original ones and cut them back to about here, because they come down and they're smaller than the arch. So I'm gonna cut them back to here and get them bolted up so I can see if they need to be bigger visually for the arch. There's only I mean, that's as far as I can go there with that bracket there, but that's where it was originally mounted anyway. And that's past the arch anyway. So I'm hoping that taking this lip off them at that height where it starts to roll round will be enough to visually from the outside edge clear these arches so that it doesn't look uh, you know, like you've got a big old thing sitting in there. So just got them in. I'm gonna go back around to Jonathan's and get some bolts so we can bolt these in and we'll cut these edges off. It should work out pretty neat. I shouldn't have to do too much extending, but I'm gonna, you know, I want it to meet this so that, sorry, the inside of the arch. That might just be a rubber lip you know, I was thinking I might do like full fiberglass ones, but that might just be a rubber lip that goes around just so it contacts into the 
into the wheel arch and stops crap getting up the back of it so I don't know yet we shall see I'm sat in the car at the minute as you can see and I've got these knobs that power one of the viewers on the channel centers apparently they're off a Mazda MX-5 but they're for replacing these so let's uh let's do a little mod now the the stuff that needs done with the dashboard anyway just to unstanded it so this is a good one to start with see how easy these go on i don't know which way it's supposed to be pointing there we go felt weird before oh there is, a, oh, there is an extra sense of the lines there it does it, it does line up one two three oh yep I don't know there's any way to it looks like about there there we go that was a good guess apparently they light up as well so, too light in here to see it anyway I like them. Cheers, Paul. So I've been messing on with the inner arches and this one's now bolted back up into place and you can see the the issue that I knew we were gonna have with this. At the minute I need to cut that bottom corner off because the clam's pushing that in so it's not sitting that far in but it's not like totally out of the way either. Like that's with my accurate finger measurements at least one finger hanging down from where the arch is you know so I need to work out what we're gonna do there because it needs a you don't want to see the inner arch from the outside do you so I've cut the front lip off these from where they rolled over and you know they, they, they came down to about here just to see where things are, are sitting the front's not too bad Although it's still, I think there's an, I could bolt it there as well. So obviously it fits the inside edge, neat and, you know, around the shocker and follows the form. But on the outside edge, they've now got a gap here all the way around because I cut that front edge off and obviously it didn't meet anyway. See, seen them. It's good little bits and pieces like that that I'm still not happy with. I still need to go around and sort these out. Like, anyway that definitely needs to be a bigger radius than than what it is because the arch is a, a bigger radius i can make it work in there it's all right in there it's it's sitting flush with the the side skirt and the clam about but it's, it starts to lose it about there with that rib so i'm gonna have a mess on with these and see how much i can cut off them until i get to the point where i've just got the uh, everything out of the way and just the very back and then i'm gonna gonna build off that to to make the the new shape what oh, i'm gonna build off with i don't know that's what i'm doing anyway i'll maybe put you on a tripod So that's what we're left with at the minute. In comparison to obviously that's not bolted in, but it's slightly different. But from that point, you can't see it from the from the outside. It's far build up off that now. Just debating what to use. If I was to use like a similar sort of plastic a bin would work wouldn't it just cut a bin up make the arch come out to where i need it to and that's a good point as well where do i need it to come and do i do it out to a certain point and then have a lip on the inside of the clam to meet that because how does that edge meet that edge i'm not too sure how i'm doing that yet because obviously you don't want it to so it's gonna catch down and lip over it. I need to work this out. I'll have a look, see uh, see what other people have been doing as well. 
right round at JDM and they're having the dinner so good opportunity to show you this mad thing so this is fine it's, it's hard to even see where it is it's, it's odd looking so this is a formula 2 sidecar outfit i think it's 600 cc um owned and run by tony baker who's like as far as the tt goes anyway he's a bit of a bit of a legend jonathan and him have been friends for many years and jonathan's been tuning this thing for him for for many years so he's got this Obviously rig, I don't know whether that maybe is part of the setup anyway. The air intake's probably at the front of the bike when the fairing's on. I did paint the fairing for one of these, for, for this bike. I don't know whether it's still in the same colours or not, but I did it years ago. So Tony makes his own chassis and does all of the fabrication of, of these. I think he makes chassis for other people in the in the same game. But what a mad looking thing, isn't it? Look where the handlebars are, for God's sake. It's like, you know, it's got this big off front tyre. It's like a car wheel, and then and then the, the, <laughs> look at the the shockers are on the, the literally like the lever mount. It's not, but it's made to, it's mounted to the. It's bizarre. Look at all the stuff that you've got there in like in one shot. You know, brake. That's obviously floating. They must be able to adjust the adjust that, or it is. That, I don't know whether that's just like a shocker or what. Uh, in behind there. Obviously, you've got your your coil over, box down there, air box into the engine. No fancy turbos or anything. Absolutely rips this thing though. And then that drives down. Obviously, you've got a little bit of frame, and this is where Tony sits in a kind of kneeling position. And um, then your rear rear arm onto your back wheel. Apparently, they've just changed the tyre. Um, I think it was wheel spinning on the dyno. So yeah, and then over this side, this is where the passenger, obviously when there's a floor, that's where the passenger is knelt as well and swinging about and hanging off the side and stuff and doing mad shit. Tony did say that I could go passenger with him. That would be one hell of an experience, wouldn't it? Just like, <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, it'd be terrifying. <laughs> But uh, I declined. He said I would, uh, all he had to do was put on his like his passengers' leathers, and then they would think that I was him. I I'm sure he was kidding, because like you can't do that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get him on the airfield with it. I'll go on it then, definitely. But I'm not coming on the TT track with him. Sod that. So yeah, that's what they look like underneath. It's like something that you don't really get to see. I'll see if I can get some pictures of the the actual bike car together and uh, put them up, get cubes to edit them in about there. Let's get a little video of this while I'm here as well, as soon as it's up in the air. Look at the size of that exhaust. He's done a right neat job, he's painted all the bits that need painted and there's his gearbox mount, look at that. Oh, no. There we go. That is just an absolute chimney pot of an exhaust going all the way down. All adjustable control arms. That's a wide tyre. Right, back to the back cave. Right, so there was this stuff laid about all over the floor in this place, the corrugated cardboard type of stuff that made out of plastic. It forms quite well and it's reasonably floppy so I can make a shape. And then I've got a bit of welding wire and then I've got the shape of the arch. And I'm going to sit that in there like that and then fold the edge of this around it. Should give us a pretty good radius. So that's given us something like that. I haven't tried the clamp down yet onto it. 
But what I'm thinking is, if we've got something that comes out about that far, possibly a little bit further, and then on the on the inside here, if we could just put like you know them brush or like door seal type things, you, you know like you know what I'm on about brushy sort of stuff, or a rubber seal in there for them that to that to meet up to. Feeling that it would be like a a lip of, of a lip of fiberglass around the top. I can play with this now because I've got some structure there to to shape up and work out what it needs to to do. Guess it won't look too bad when it's all one piece and so you can't see it from anywhere. Obviously, you can see a few screws in that. And you can see the back edge of it. But that's sitting up. It's probably sitting about there in the wheel arch. So it's away from the lip. There's a gap. So you can lift it up and down at the minute. Now if I put like a like I say a brushed edge, I could actually fit it to the edge of that. Then obviously that would fill the gap and just settle it down onto the needs to be out a little bit more. I need to close the gap up a little bit. I think that brushed edge idea might just, I don't want it catching on the bottom of this, you see, but it needs to come all the way to the clamp. So like a rubber edge or something around that once that's made into fiberglass. That works anyway. So I'll do the other one to, to that stage and then I'll glass over the top of that to keep the shape and then then take it out probably. But I need to make it make it stick out a little bit further first because that's just extending it a bit so yeah it's probably me for the day. I need to go and uh, get my car from Jonathan's. I've left it around there. Uncle John's on the sweep and brush at the minute. I've got to say this is a master class in sweeping up a large area. Look at that, he systematically went across the room, got it all piled up, and he'll just be able to get all that in one pile, no bother at all. Instead of just randomly firing it everywhere. You could get a longer stroke in there, maybe. We're analyzing your sweeping up, John. Eh? We're analyzing your sweeping up. I think it's, it's absolute quality. Oh, look at this, he's checking for for tools and anything that might uh, not be supposed to be in the in the pile again quality skills here look at that and now he's going to take the uh, length approach it's ki kind of satisfying johnny you're going to come up here and like do that i sort of want to watch that sweep up into a pack do you want us to like shovel some of this in the bin no i'm just going right down to the you're going right the down are you right okay then Wants a shovel at this end then. It is quite a large area to sweep up. Just about done for the day. It's not late or anything, but I'm not under too much pressure now. I myself got that wheel arch done anyway, and well, set up. It needs extended out a little bit, but doing it that way is definitely going to work. So I'm happy with the results of today. Uh, we'll get a decent wheel arch out of it and then obviously pretty much exactly the same on that side and something similar on this side but on the front on the, on the front I want to incorporate an under tray into the bottom of the bumper so possibly like because uh, we have floor there that's the floor so um, there is that big plastic tub that goes in, in there where the spare wheel goes and that, so uh, potentially put that back in. But I don't think it had any sort of belly pan and it's certainly got big gaps down down there from there to the, to the front of the wheel arch. So it does have those bits in that would normally meet the, the standard bumper like that. Obviously this is a different shape and it still leaves big gaps so like I said I think I'm going to make some sort of flat plate for the front. We'll see how they go anyway but it's, it's, it's working out alright. 
not too much of a mission 